post raid pole barn building, actually out here in Seneca County. Ohio. If you follow this channel long enough, you see I highlight profiles and post frames, pole barns around Lake Erie. This one actually about 35 miles southwest of Lake Erie. Now, Lake Erie is a fairly big lake, but a 30 by 32, 14 with two 12 by 12 carb outs. All right, but you can see right here, blue wainscot, three foot section. Like I said, they're 14 feet at the eave. All right, so white and blue. Actually, that's a 29 gauge metal. And let me take you around here. But like I say here, we have this traditional, I like to call it traditional. You can see right there, the vented soffit right there. Look at those blue outside corners there. But you can see right there, one foot overhang. And let me take you around here. Again, this is a 29 gauge steel. All right, a little bit thicker. I know uh, a lot of you guys hit me up 26, 28, 29. Each steel, all right, good solid stuff. All right, we source our steel from different suppliers out there. Okay, Metal Sales, ABC, a number of different companies. All right, but that's a blue. That's a three-foot section of wainscot right there. All right, let me get you a little bit closer so you can see this as well. It's a white gutter. Again, when gutter can come, we can roll that out. You can see four inch, five inch, six inch, depending on what you're looking to do. All right, so there you go, 30 by 32, 14. And this is something actually I haven't shared in a while, but if you go back to my previous videos, look how we set this wainscot trim up just a little bit. See this right here? As you see how we leave a little gap, a little fissure right there. And the reason why we do that, we've had this happen maybe once or twice in the last 10 or 15 years, but rust will come up, especially on a white piece of metal like this, okay? So I remember the salesman from ABC said, hey, you guys gotta leave that up just a little bit. So we leave a little crack. See how that water right there you can see how it's beating up right there. So that's just something we do there. You may want to take that into consideration. Let's go inside here and check this out actually on the interior framing. Okay, so these carve outs here, 12 by 12. And you see it's a nice look there, blue. All right, and we got the white here. So we actually got three ply laminated columns right here. All right, state of Ohio, we go down four feet. All right, 48 inches, and then we set it on a concrete cookie. Then we actually got uplifts in there going east and west, north and south. All right, so you can see right there, three ply laminated columns. All right, you see a pressure point right there. Somebody asked me, you know, what, what part of this tree is out of the ground? And actually, if you look at this, actually it's four feet. So see that? So four feet above the ground there, that's a treated section. All right, we're going four feet in the ground as well. Right, you can see the different splice points on this three ply piece of wood right here. See how it's finger jointed, glued, finger jointed, laminated right there, see that? And then also if we move up right here as well, but these are two by sixes. All right, so in the past, a lot of people rolled with like six by sixes. All right, and those still have their place, but right here, three ply laminated column, you know, it can reduce that pressure of a natural piece of wood of twisting and turning. Okay, that kind of gives you a better look there. And actually that's a yellow pine that we use up there. See that double top beam header? All right. So we sourced that from down south, Alabama, Georgia. But if you're viewing from me from the Pacific Northwest, you might be using like a, a Douglas fir. Let me get you a little bit closer here so you can see the top beam header that we're rolling with. Okay, see that actually we're using two by 12s. Okay, we're trying to span here. We are spanning 12 by 12s overheads. All right, so four foot on center truss spacing. That's a drip stop metal and I haven't talked about that in a while. But you can see that acts as the vapor bear. It comes pre-assembled, pre-applied that underneath that metal, that roof metal, which would be a blue. All right, so that's a drip stop metal. Now our truss is we get the engineering specs actually out of Chicago from iTech Engineering, so we clear with them. And you can see right there, wall girts, two by fours right there, 24 inches apart. And I haven't talked about this, but check this out actually. One thing, 1650 lumber, see that right there? All right, what, what does that mean? How does that compare to like a two grade? How does that mic out? Well, 1650 MSR, machine stress rated. That's what that stands for. A two grade is gonna mic out about 1,150. All right, a 1650 is obviously 1650 tensile pressure point strength. That kind of gives you a little bit of idea there. See right there on the headers, 12 by 12s. So kind of give you a little bit of better understanding. So no windows on this one. You see a nice man door. 
but a 30 by 30 214 getting finished up overhead doors and uh and then the concrete all right let me know in the comments section if you got any questions and we'll keep it rocking and rolling so next we'll keep it dialed in right here